number 10 on our list today is the Felixstowe Fire Demon, a humanoid cryptid with only one known sighting which took place in Felixstowe, England in September of 1965. The only known witness to the Felixstowe Fire Demon's appearance was a Michael Johnson, who was riding in a car one night with two friends, passenger Mavis Fordyce and driver George Maskey. Mr. Maskey had pulled up at the curb on an isolated road, Walton Avenue, and the three were engaged in lively conversation when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the passenger, Mr. Johnson, abruptly swung his car door open and walked out into the dark and murky night. Fordyce and Maskey exchanged perplexed glances, but simply assumed Maskey had gone out into the trees to relieve himself. Mere moments after Johnson had left the car, the two passengers began to hear a strange, high-pitched humming sound. The sound, unlike anything they had heard before, began to grow louder and louder, becoming impossible to ignore and overwhelming them. Mr. Maskey leaned out of his car window to try and ascertain what exactly the noise was and where it was coming from. It was then that he spotted an orange, oval-shaped object in the sky, about 90 feet above his car. Was this a UFO? Or was it the Felixstowe Fire Demon coming in for a landing? Maskey and Fordyce then jumped out of the car and went looking for Johnson, who they eventually found passed out on the ground. When Johnson regained consciousness the next morning, he told his two friends and the attending doctor that he had felt compelled to walk off into the woods by some unknown force, and that when he had been walking for an indeterminate amount of time, he had been met by a humanoid being with sloping, glowing eyes and was completely engulfed in flames. He had no recollection of what took place during the meeting, and the Felixstowe fire demon, to our knowledge, has not been seen again since. At number 9, we have the Mogollon Monster, aka the Arizona Bigfoot. There are so many reports of Bigfoot-like creatures all over the world that they are becoming difficult to ignore and brush off. The Mogollon Monster is, like most ape men, over 7 feet tall, bipedal and covered with fur. This one has large red eyes which are said to be wild and feral-like. It has a strong odour which is said to be a mix of dead fish, skunk, decaying peat moss, the musk of a snapping turtle, and bad B.O. This cryptid should not be approached, as it is highly violent and volatile, not at all keen on humans or any outsider, and is omnivorous, meaning that humans are very much on the menu. Its most frequent prey, however, is deer, which it captures, then decapitates, before consuming. Number 8. The 50-foot Congo Snake I've said it before, Traveller, and I'll say it again. Everything is bigger in the Congo. This snake is thought to be a rare variety of python, which grows to incredible sizes. It has also been theorised that it could be a surviving Gigantophis, a prehistoric giant snake. It wouldn't be the only surviving prehistoric animal that inhabits the dense forests of the Congo. The creature was first spotted in 1959 by Belgian Air Force Colonel Remy van Leerd, who noticed it while flying over the forests of the Katanga region. He described it as having dark green skin with brown top scales, and upon circling back to take another look at it, the gigantic serpent raised itself upward, looking as though it were ready to strike Van Leerd's aircraft. At this point, he noticed that the creature's underbelly was whitish in colour. It was around 50 feet in length, 2 feet wide and had a triangular, 3 feet long head. Human prey would be just the right size for this enormous super python, which may account for the lack of witnesses. Number 7. The Alicanto. Beautiful, majestic, dangerous. A giant bird that lives all across Central and South America, with two types. One that eats gold and another that eats silver. Depending on which one it eats, its feathers will develop either a silver or gold-coloured hue. Why does the Alicanto eat gold or silver? Nobody knows for certain. Perhaps it has evolved in such a way because eating these elements guarantees a lack of competition. 
This could also be a much more extreme version of magpie-like behaviour. Magpies collect shiny objects to decorate their nests with to attract mates. The alicanto may be a much more evolved version of this type of bird, with a combination of magpie hoarding tendencies and the peacock's display behaviour of colourful feathers, could mean that the alicanto has evolved to eat gold and silver to give itself a silvery or golden coat of feathers, with the most striking feathers attracting a mate. They are said to bring good luck to those who spot them, as long as they are not spotted in turn. If they are, the alicanto will, instead of leading the person to gold, lead them onto a dangerous cliff top or ravine, where the unfortunate pursuer will lose their footing and perish. Number 6. Cadborosaurus, Caddy for short. A sea serpent that makes its home in Cadbury Bay, British Columbia. It is said to have an elongated body, an equine-like head and long flippers on its neck and sides for underwater propulsion. This cryptid was first spotted over 200 years ago and has been sighted over 300 times since. The last sighting took place in 2009, when a man by the name of Kelly Nash briefly caught the Cadborosaurus on camera, as can be seen here. There have been two live captures of juvenile Cadborosauri, one in 1968 near De Corsi Island, and another in 1991, when a woman named Phyllis Harsh captured a baby measuring around two feet wide, before returning it to the water off Johns Island. The Gugu, also known as the Cuckoo, is a gigantic humanoid cryptid, usually described as possessing female attributes, that is said to prey on and eat humans. It lives in the sea, and is covered with scales. It would seem to possess a high level of intelligence, as it carries a large bag over its shoulder which it uses to transport its human prey. There are many humanoids said to live in the world's oceans, some are roughly the same size as a human being, while others, like the Ninjen or the Gugu, are giants. Giants also used to live on land, like the Trolls, and there are probably many other humanoids that the powers that be don't want us to know about. The Gugu was said by the French 16th century explorer Samuel de Champlin to have captured and eaten many Native Americans in the years before his arrival. At number 4, we have the Yowie, an ape-man that makes its home in the Australian outback. One of the world's many undiscovered ape-men, the Yowie is typical in that like many Bigfoot-type cryptids, and the previously mentioned Mogion monster, it stands at between 6 and 12 feet tall and is covered almost entirely with hair. Its nose is flat and wide, and its footprints are much larger than that of a human. The first sighting of a Yowie by Westerners is said to have taken place in 1795, with Aboriginal stories of the creature going back hundreds, possibly thousands of years. The Australian outback is an enormous area, with more than 2.5 million square miles of desert and tropical regions in the north and south. One of the most sparsely populated places on Earth, it could easily be home to a great number of undiscovered species, like the Yowie. The Funeral Mountain Terror Shot, a truly bizarre animal, makes its home in a small number of mountainous regions of North America. It has a casket-shaped body between 6 and 8 feet in length, and has long, wobbly legs that cause it to sway unsteadily as it walks. The strange beast was first reported by some Mormon emigrants, who observed a procession entering the desert from a certain mountain range, afterward named the Funeral Mountains. They are said to live in the higher areas of the mountain range, where they spend most of their lives until they're gripped by a strange desire to leave their home in large numbers and attempt to cross the desert a journey that it never survives. 
The extreme heat from the desert sun is said to kill them rather quickly, being acclimated to the cold mountain air. They collapse onto the sand, where their bodies swell up and explode, leaving large grave-shaped holes in the sand. At number two, we have a cryptid that was witnessed in the home of the Mothman, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. The flying ray, with grey skin and with a wingspan greater than a two-lane road, was spotted in December of 2004 by a man and a woman on a clear night when it glided over the Ohio River. Was this a new cryptid, an actual flying ray? Or was this event that took place in 2004 in Point Pleasant actually a Mothman sighting? It would be easy to misinterpret what was seen if the sighting took place at night. Or perhaps it was a flying ray. With no further sightings reported since 2004, we may never know for certain. At number one, we have the Imbunche, a twisted humanoid said to guard the entrance to a warlock's cave in Chile, the same warlock who kidnapped him as a child. When the Imbunche was a three-month-old baby, the warlock took him from his parents, forked his tongue, broke his right leg and bent it backwards behind his head, and applied a special cream to his back to make him grow thick hair. The warlock fed the infant exclusively on black cat milk and goat meat, before moving on to decayed human flesh from local graveyards. As a result of the warlock's magic, the Imbunche became the guardian of the warlock's cave, where it would stay until the warlock was chased away or his cave was destroyed by angry locals. Throughout hundreds of years of guarding the cave, the Imbunche acquired a wealth of magical knowledge and can act as an advisor to the Warlock. As a way of scaring the townspeople in times past, the Warlock or Warlocks would carry the Imbunche through town while it thrashed and screamed, and the Warlocks would announce doom and misfortune to everyone within earshot.